Now, <clears throat> I'm going to show you today how to make a corn husk doll. And uh, it's one of my favorite things to do, but I'm gonna explain something that happened right <laughs> this morning that I just realized. Um, when I ordered the corn husk, they come in different sizes and I forgot to specify the size I needed. So I got very small corn husk. And if we go to make a doll out of this, um, they will be, you can make a doll out of it just fine. It'll just be a little tiny doll. So I've gotten creative this morning. And what you're going to do is you're going to need a Tupperware or a bowl, something like that with water in it. And you're going to soak these corn husk at least a good 20 minutes or so before you use them. Let them get really soft and pliable. Now I got my corn husk at the grocery store in the uh, ethnic food aisle because they use those husk to make tamales and stuff. Um, so you can pick them up there. You can pick them up at craft stores and at other grocery stores. So what I did is I let mine soak. And I'm gonna tell you, you'll wanna put a towel down on the table probably if you're working at a table or a countertop because it is water and wet things. I put one down on the, on the, on the table itself and then I get my corn husk out and I actually have another towel for my hands and you can kind of pat dry. So I'm gonna pat them dry a little bit. So once you get them well, where they're dry enough to work with, what I did this morning was I ripped the corn husk in half and then I stapled them so I would get length. So we got a little creative. Traditionally, I would have to say we wouldn't have used staples, but we'll, we'll use them to this morning. And once you do that, you're gonna stack your corn husk over each other. And I folded this in half, right? Now, you're gonna need some sort of string. You can use any kind of string. I've seen people use little real thin rawhide. I'm using some embroidery floss this morning and I'm using it in a color so you can actually see it. And what you're gonna do first is you're gonna cut a piece of string. And we're gonna figure out where we want the head of the doll. So I'm gonna put my piece of string down. I'm gonna say about that much, looks good. And we're just gonna tie this string like this around the place that we want the face to be or the head. And once you've tied this, I just tie it in a knot, nothing fancy. Cut off my excess string and you've got this. And if you don't like a little piece, you can just remove it. But this is gonna be the head of your doll. We folded this in half, if you remember. So you can see it's in two pieces still. I'm going to get out a couple of these other husk and we're gonna dry them off as well. And once we dry these off, I'm gonna just roll them up. That's a little thick, so I'm gonna re-roll this. So let's say about like that, a little bit less. So now we've got this rolled up piece of corn husk. Where the doll is split in half, you're going to place this in between. So now we have arms, right? This calls for another piece of string. So once you've got your string, you've got your arms, you place your string below your arms, if you can see right there. And once again, we're just gonna wrap it around the doll, this good and tight. Once you do that, you're going to tie it off again in a knot and you have your basic woman right there. Now, the other thing that I like to do with mine is I use these little pieces of string that I used, the kind of the scraps, but you can cut a fresh piece if you need. And I'm gonna tie it around the ends of the arms. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. 
her little arm, her little hand, I'm going to tie that right there. And this will keep her arms from coming. As the husk dries, sometimes it'll start to peel apart. This will actually keep her in one piece. And sometimes you'll have to trim because you'll have really long bits. So we're just gonna cut that off. Another piece of string. As we go, you're gonna go around the arm again. And this is just to keep the arms from coming undone. And there you have your very basic corn husk doll. She's got a little skirt. And this one, she's got some extra, so you could cut that off. And once you do that, if you're done, you can kind of spread the skirt out and leave her to stand and she'll eventually dry. And then she's great to play with. Um, you can get, I have some people get so creative with these things. I have a friend that she makes corn husk dolls that actually look like sculpture. She really, really makes beautiful pieces of art, but um, you can do anything with these. And they're kind of a fun afternoon activity for moms who have bored children because bored children get into trouble. Uh, one of the, uh, this is a little scrap of felt. You, you cut it out, you fold it in half over the head, tie it around the waist. You have a little dress. I've seen people put wings on these. I've seen, this one was made at one of the events we did a long time ago. They have used yarn and they've braided yarn. She has a long uh, braid. They've put a little feather on her. She has this is just a piece of satin that is wrapped around. It's not sewn, it's just tied with a little ribbon. So really you can get as creative as you like. This one, she's got all kinds, of, they've, they've frilled the skirts so she's a little fancier and they've added an extra piece of corn husk as a wrap. I've seen people braid corn husk to make hair. You can use felt, you can add. I actually have my daughters when they were dry, they used to paint. They would get paint and they would paint the little tops one color and then the skirt's a different color. Uh, now, if you would like to make a boy instead of a girl, that's pretty easy too. You take your scissors and cut up the middle of your skirt. You're gonna need a fresh piece of string. I'm gonna go ahead and cut both pieces here. You'll need two pieces of string. And then you wrap this piece of string. If you can see where you put the split in the skirt, you're gonna wrap the piece of string and wrap it around the legs. So now you've got one tied and then we're gonna work on the other leg. All right, almost done here with my male version of the corn husk woman. But you might have some boys and you might have some girls who want both. So now you have a man versus a, a, a corn husk woman. So it's something you can do with the kids. And if you tell them the story as you're working on it, you get to pass off some information about what's important and how people should be with each other. So it's one of my favorite tales. Um, and like I said, you can get crazy. You can paint. I've seen people put dye in the water and dye the husk before you can, I mean, some people turn it into a real art form. Like it looks like sculpture, but these are just fun and quick. They're things that I did with my kids to pass on the story. It's the story that my mother told me. And I've had lots of people ask what tribe started this. And I find that so many tribes being a storyteller, all of us kind of have versions of the same story and they were passing these things along. So it's one of my favorite stories is the corn husk woman. All right. I don't know if we have any questions. I hope that that was uh, pretty thorough. And then if you have any questions, I guess there's some uh, instructions and you can go online and find instructions for corn husk dolls everywhere. And they're really pretty simple. The other story, <clears throat> that I'd like to share with you today. Um, it's about one of my favorite animals, um, Chokwahili, the possum. And uh, I understand that uh, our friend Evan today is running the show for us uh, 
he's running the audio and the video and all of that kind of stuff. And his wife is a veterinary tech, he said, a vet tech. And she is fostering right now. Chokwahili. They have three little possums that she's fostering and rehabbing, um, which is always incredible because I would be, I'm always in awe of people who do that because I'm not a good foster. I keep everything and then I have, it would be bad. I would have 900 possums and things in my home that should probably be in the wild. Um, but I thought we would tell this story and it's another one of my favorite stories. It's And it's a story about what's important. And that's the thing with Native stories. So many of our stories, they, they'll, they teach. All of our stories really teach when you think about it, whether it's a migration story that's telling you where we came from, that's passing that information on and teaching the children, this is you. Uh, whether it's a how rabbit got its tail or why the sun's in the sky or why alligator has a back, it's cracked. You know, it's all teaching. And what I find is being a storyteller, even if, if you're not looking at native cultures, but I grew up overseas as a child. I traveled all over the world with my father and we lived in Germany, Turkey, Okinawa, Scotland. You go to any continent and all of the traditional people have traditional stories. And it's what's so amazing to me is that so many of these stories are basically the same. So many people have a story, tribes, tradition, cultures, whoever you want to call them. Um, if you go to Africa, they have a story about why this animal has a tail. If you go to the Vikings, they have a story about lightning or thunder or what, you know, we have the same type of stories. So I think it's important as we move forward to once again, think about how we're all connected. We're all the same. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you call yourself. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter, you know, your skin color or your religious beliefs or anything. All these stories tell us in the beginning, we all had the same motives. And a lot of these motives are how to raise your children, to, you know, and be safe and how to love each other and that kind of thing. So that's kind of been my focus to start this year. And uh, it's the stories I'm sharing with you today. So one of the stories that I'm going to tell is about Chokwahili. Now, in the beginning, when Abba Banili, when Creator made the world, he made all of the animals first. And he gave them each their own special gift. So every animal got something to call their own. When you talk about uh, Isi, the deer, long legs so he would be swift, he could run. Nashoba, the wolf, who had to hunt deer, got cunning so he could figure out how to catch these quick, quick creatures. You have uh, 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 Chokfi, the rabbit. He got long, long ears, so he would hear the danger that came to him. look -see, the turtle. He got a home. He would never be without a home. He would always have his home with him. Um, when you look at all the different animals, Nita, the bear, got size and strength. He was huge. And when you look at Koni, now Koni, you all know, even if you don't know Koni, Koni's a little black and white guy with a big fluffy tail. Koni got stink. He got stink to defend himself. So that's a gift. And each animal got their own gift. And they were all very proud of their gifts and all very happy. But Chokwahili, the possum, he was extremely happy with his gift. His gift was the best gift in the world because he had the most beautiful tail of all the animal kingdom. I mean, he was gorgeous. That tail was silky and long and beautiful. Oh, just gorgeous. And he knew it and he loved it. And he walked around and he said to all the other animals, hey, Hey, look here. Look, have you seen my tail? Have you seen, isn't it beautiful? I have a beautiful, beautiful tail. He would hold that tail up and he would wrap himself up in that tail and he would say, oh, my tail is amazing. It's so, be have you seen how beautiful my tail is? And he would make all the other animals stop and look at his tail. If they sat next to each other at a, uh, a dance or any kind of meeting, he would say, here, hold my tail. I'm going to give you the privilege of holding my tail out of the dirt. 
the animals got very tired of Chukwahili very fast. But then he not only bragged about his tail, but he started to do something else that was just as bad, if not worse. He began to point to all the other animals and explain to them why their, their gift, why their creation, what creator had given them wasn't very good. He began to pick on them and he told deer, Isi, he said, oh, Isi, you may be fast, but your legs are really skinny. You look weird. And he said to bear, you may be big and strong, but look at your tail. I mean, if you turn around, your tail's that big. <laughs> you have such an ugly little tail. I, I, just awful. Chukfi, rabbit. Oh, you can hear danger, but it makes you look just goofy. Who wants big ears? Nobody wants big ears. He went to each animal and he told them how terrible their gift was and how, how oh, just nobody wanted this. Nobody wanted that. And he went to Connie the skunk and he said, you just stink. No one wants to stink. And he went and he told each animal and it really upset them. And they began to feel bad about themselves because here was this, this possum with this beautiful tail telling them how ugly or, or worthless, how bad they all were. And they, they, they got to talking amongst themselves and they decided they weren't the problem, but the Chokwahili was the problem. They wanted to get away from him. So they decided that whenever they had a gathering, if they had to dance or they had a meeting or they had any kind of business to conduct, they would swim across the river. And they knew that Chokwahili would not get in water. He would not risk getting this beautiful tail wet. He was never going to get in the water. So they went to the river. Now, the river that they swam across was called Misasapokni. Now, when the Europeans came to my people and they said, what do you call this river? We said, Misa Sapokni. Sapokni means old. If I say Sapokni, I'm saying, oh, that's really old. If I say Misa Sapokni, it's literally older than time or without beginning. It's so old, it has no start. Misa Sapokni. And the Europeans and the Spaniards said, Mississippi. And it became Mississippi, and it has been Mississippi ever since. But the animals went to the Misa Sapukni. And when they went to the Misa Sapukni, they swam across. And as they are swimming, Chokwahili realizes that he is being left behind. And he's running back and forth and back and forth, up and down the bank. Hey, 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 guys, what about me? Hey, hey. But they keep swimming. They act like they don't hear him. And he's jumping up and down. He's like, you can't have a meeting without me and my tail. Hey, wait, wait. But the animals keep swimming. They pretend like they don't hear him at all. And Chokwahili is just livid. He doesn't know what to do. And he's running back and forth up and down the bank. And he trips on the minko, the king of the Misa Sapokni, the alligator snapping turtle. And that big old turtle's laying there. And he was half asleep. And Possum bumped into him. And the turtle looked at him and, and Possum said, hey, hey, Minko, you can help me out. You can help me out. Take me across the river. Take me across the Misa Sapokni. And the alligator snapping turtle looked at me and he said, no, why would I do that? Chuck Willie said, I don't know, but if you do it for me, I'll do something for you. I'll give you a favor. And the, the alligator snapping turtle thought about it for a minute and he said, I know what I want. I want a tail just like yours. So he said, no problem. I'm happy to give you a tail. Just like I can get you a tail. No problem. No problem. Give me a ride. So he climbs onto the alligator snapping turtle's back and he's hanging on. And the snapping turtle is swimming across very slowly. And about halfway across, Chokwahili starts and he says, now, you know, I can give you a tail. Happy to give you a tail, but I can't do it today. You can't actually have the tail like tonight. We're going to have to wait a while. There's things I have to do. I'm going to have to gather up some stuff. But if you wait, I'll get you a tail and it'll be a good tail. As good as mine. The snapping turtle agreed and he swam across. They got to the other side. Chokwahili hopped off nice and dry and he came into the dance ground. Hey, everybody, Chokma, hello, I'm here. 
and they were so glad to see him. They were so upset that he was there again with his beautiful tail. Well, this went on every time they had a meeting. The animals would swim across the river and Chokwahili would run to the to the Minko, to the king of the Mississippi. And he would say, let me have a ride. And the Minko would agree. And about halfway across the river, he would tell Minko, now listen, I know it's been a while, but I'm working on that tail. And as soon as I get the tail ready, I'm going to bring it to you and you can have the tail, but it won't be tonight. Is that okay? And the Minko would agree. And he would swim across the Mississippi and possum would get off and he would run into the into the gathering and and join the dance or the meeting or whatever they were doing. And the animals were once again stuck with Chokwahili. Now, this went on for months. And finally, the animals all went to the to the Minko. They went to the king of the Mississippi. They went to the alligator snapping turtle themselves and they said, Minko. Why? Why do you keep bringing him to us? We don't want him. We're swimming to get away from him, but you keep bringing him across. Why are you doing this? And the Miko said, well, he said he's going to give me a tail. The animals stopped and they said, Minko, Kia, no, 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 no. That's not how it works. You don't get to trade gifts. Whatever the creator gave you is what you, what, what your gift is. You don't, Possum can't give you a tail. Creator gives the gifts. But the Minko refused to hear it. He said, he said he'd give me a tail. He's going to give me a tail. So the the animals, they they kind of shook their head. And they said, well, you know, it's not going to happen, but okay. So they leave. The next meeting comes, the next full moon. And they decide they're going to have a big dance and a get together. And all the animals begin to swim across the Misa Sabuni. Chokwahili comes up and he taps the Minko. He says, Minko, give me a ride. And the Minko stops and he looks at him and he says, where's my tail? And Chokwahili goes, oh, well, now listen, I have your tail and I'm going to give it to you. But you got to take me across the Mississippi. Minko agreed. Possum climbs onto his back. The alligator snapping turtle begins to swim. And right as they get across, the Mississippi, right as they get into the middle of it and the water is swift. Chokwahili goes, now listen, that tail. I have it, but I didn't bring it. I mean, I didn't bring it tonight. There's still some stuff I need to do to make it perfect. But as soon as I get it done, I'm gonna bring you this tail. And the Minko got so angry that he began to sink. Now, Possum is doing everything he can to stay up on top of this turtle and not get wet. And he's starting to panic. And the alligator snapper turtle is sinking and sinking. And Chukwahili is fighting. And finally, he's trying to swim with his bottom up in the air, holding his tail, trying not to get wet. But the water in the Mississippi sweeps him under. And when he sticks his head up, he is soaking wet. And the snapping turtle sticks his up. Possum sticks his head up. And the turtle says, do I get my tail? Chokwahili was so angry. He said, Keel, no, no tail for you because you got mine wet. The snapping turtle got so angry. He opened his mouth and he snapped down on Possum's tail. And Possum had to swim the rest of the Mississippi dragging the biggest snapping turtle in all of the river. And when they got to the other side and when they hit the beach, That snapping turtle planted his feet and possum planted his and they began to pull back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until finally with each tug, that tail began to slide and it began to slide off of the bone. And right when they got to the end, that tail popped off. And that alligator snapping turtle swam to the bottom of the Mississippi where he still has that tail today. Now Chokwahili, he turned around and he looked where his tail had been and there was a long bony pink tail. Had about three little hairs sticking off of it that were gray. He was horrified. It looked like the mouse's tail. It was not the most beautiful tail in the world anymore. He began to walk into the dance grounds, eyes big, and all the other animals began to laugh. 
oh, they begin to really laugh. They're pointing at him and they're laughing. And the deer says, how about that tail now, Possum? How's your tail now? And Possum looked at him and he got so embarrassed. You know how sometimes when you're embarrassed, you kind of grin, you can't help yourself. And he looked at all me, he said, he grinned, he hoped they would feel sorry for him, but this made him laugh harder. Bear fell down on the ground. He was holding his belly. He was laughing and rolling from side to side. All the animals were just rolling. Chukwahili, he, he kept walking. He got to the edge of the woods and he turned back and he looked at all of them and he grinned real hard. And he was hoping that they would feel sorry for him, but it made him laugh harder. And he grinned so hard that his face froze like that. And to this day, if you see Chukwahili, it's always at night. And when you see him, he'll turn and he'll look at you and he'll go, because he hopes you'll feel sorry for him because now he has probably one of the ugliest tails in, in the world. And that is how Possum got his tail. So we have some extra time. The corn husk stalls did not take as long as we thought. Are there any questions or anything that people are writing in? I, I know that all of my friends out there in Charlotte land, you're all getting custom-made corn husk dolls for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're, really, they're so fun because you can get really creative with oh, them. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. I've, I've seen, I've seen a person that took a uh, rabbit pelt. They would get fur and they made the most wonderful outfits, you know, these vests, or they would actually use the fur too. I've seen the black hair used as, black fur used as hair, you know, so you can get really, really creative and you can make them. And I'm also seeing a lot of times the people at Christmas time, they'll make the little angel, the little women, and they'll take extra of the husk and they fold them. And basically when you put it behind them, then they fashion them into wings. So I've actually seen them on, um, I have a, a native friend that she puts one on top of her Christmas tree every year as her angel. But it's, you know, she's really taken the time to, to fan out the beautiful skirt and then she's added corn husk on the back as wings. So you can really get creative. I've also seen corn horses. I've seen people that have figured out how to make little animals out of them. You can, you know, anytime you fold anything in half, you put two, four legs on it, you can have any kind of animal that you can think of to create. So you can get really, really creative. And, and especially I think in a time where so many of us are staying home and you have kids that get bored and bored kids get into trouble. Um, you can call your grocery store or go to your grocery store, craft store and pick up a bag of corn husk. I love it. That was so delightful. You had me giggling like crazy. I had to, <laughs> I had to mute myself. I don't know if Gail is still in the house or not, but um, I just, again, want to thank I'm you. I'm here. All. Oh, hello there. Hello there. Where, how, where would I go when Miss Amy's telling this story? I know. It was just <laughs> I'm right here. <laughs> delightful and and again you know for everybody out there in virtual land i hope you will be time travelers and you'll explore the mona.us website because there's so much for families to do and we hope it just lights a spark where you want to learn more and you know contact us and we have uh again this is extraordinary storyteller uh monthly presentation that gail curates is just one of our favorites. Um, one other thing coming up is that um, later on this month, we will have Felicia Ruiz that will do uh, Indigenous Food as Medicine. And um, all of these are archived on the website. So you can use them as a resource. And we have the Morning Star uh, uh, broadcasting Indigenous news across, across the globe. And I, I hope you'll, you know, that we change it every few days so you can keep track of us. Um, and one other uh, program that I am really excited about, and I don't think I've even told Gail this yet. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Um, for the fifth annual cultural celebration, we are going to work around this next series coming up, Indigenuity. And um, we're going to, um, uh, it'll be about tradition and innovation. And, you know, from everything from environmental sciences to music, to storytelling, to medicine, 
hmm, I wonder if there's anybody in Congress we could call. But um, so anyway, <laughs> I'd like you to stay tuned for that. And, um, you know, again, everybody, thank you so much for joining us today. And um, we will be uh, bringing, also I talked to Gail and um, I extend this to Amy that, um, you know, about helping us with some more of our educational outreach in 2021. So for everybody in virtual land, thank you so much for visiting us today. Chokmashki, thank you very much for having me. Oh, e. So we meet again. Chapis we will see you. Shalom. 